when I came here uh, in 1979, uh, I came with a tremendous desire to, uh, to carry out a, a ministry to the youth. And yet, in, 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 in trying to give uh, uh, expression to that desire, uh, I looked around, I couldn't find a, mini, a, a place where I could gather them, uh, uh, to just take them camping. I had to uh, rent facilities, uh, whether it was at Yosemite or at the uh, YMCA camp in, in the north. And, uh, and I uh, realized that we needed a place like this. I remember the first time I met uh, Bishop Anthony. He's very dynamic, very excited, and he was going to do all these things. He spoke it. He, it's more like saying it. He claimed it. He was going to do it. And it was done. His vision. He came with a vision of it didn't matter what piece of land, his vision was going to be put in place. Uh, when uh, um, Metropolitan Anthony uh, was uh, at the ranch, he felt that he was returning back to his homeland. He wanted to have a place where he can bring the young people. So he wanted to recreate his own experience back in his village. So we came up here and I was overwhelmed by the barn. So because it had been used for dancing and they were drinking and what have you. I looked around and this is, and I found the nickel stuck uh, in the boards here, I guess from the people who were buying and uh, there were some nails that were left. So I picked up the nickel and the nail. Now this is symbolic how we begin with this simplicity. Forty years ago, the Lord brought three people to this place. Father John Bacchus, Nick Caceres, and Metropolitan Anthony. Together, they planted a seed that blossomed into St. Nicholas Ranch and Retreat Center. As we celebrate those 40 years and begin to look towards the future, let's take a moment and look back at how it all began. I was invited by then Father Paul Palesti, who is in New York, because his son was being baptized by the newly arrived Bishop Anthony. So I was invited to the baptism in San Jose, and uh, I was impressed with this vigorous young new bishop. And he uh, took the baby and, and uh, lifted it up to the congregation and said, what future does this child have in the church? How are we going to teach this child the faith so he can pass it on? He says, I'm asking someone here, you know how Bishop Anthony was, to donate a million dollars or to find a facility where we can have center, a retreat center too. So at that point, something clicked in my mind. I had just met him, so I went up to him, of course, and reverenced his hand, and I said, Your Grace, I think I may have something for you. So I came back to uh, Fresno, and I sat down with Nick Caceres, and I said, Nick, you know, you're talking about why the church isn't doing things. I know you have some properties you were mentioning. Basically, when Bishop Anthony approached him and says, this is what I want to do, and you need someone to donate, okay? So he talked to me and my ex-wife, and we said, yeah, fine. And because the way I, I always looked at it is, everything is God's anyway. I'm just a caretaker. And uh, the bishop said, if you can get this from Nick, this would be where we would want to go. I uh, called Nick and said, I'd like for you to meet our new, very young and very charismatic, very Christ-oriented bishop. My plan was to be a dude ranch on the remaining part. And as it turned out, it did turn out to be a dude ranch, okay? So Bishop Anthony worked on Bacchus to get him a, a donor. Since Bacchus is close to us, Bacchus is the one who said, would you do this, okay? I didn't hardly know 
Bishop Anthony at that time, but we've become very good friends, you know. And Nick and the Bishop really hit it off very well. So again, to make this story a little shorter and a little more interesting, before you know it, uh, Nick decided to dedicate the ranch and give it to the metropolis, the then diocese. Hi, my name is Nicola Epstithiu and my grandpa, Nick Caceres, donated the land to the Archdiocese. Oh, hi, hi Jess. Hey, how's it How going? Are you? <laughs> this is my cousin, Jessica Walner. Hi. <laughs> and the, the um, Metropolitan Anthony and, of blessed memory and Father John Backus um, approached our family 40 years ago to donate, to see if they would be willing to donate this land to the church for summer camp. Yeah, I mean, I know um, also our grandmother, Sandra um, Alderson, Caceres at the time, um, it was really one of her ideas um, to make sure that this property could be used for her descendants for years to come. The first liturgy, of course, was here, but in anticipation of it, we found uh, some of the broken boards from the horse stalls down in the barn here. And... Um, the altar table was, was made by the Barless brothers. They brought routers and what have you. And this is wood from down in the barn. And uh, at that first liturgy, because of our grand benefactor, Nick uh, Caceres and his wife, uh, then of blessed memory, Sandy Caceres, they were here as, uh, as well as, as with their uh, daughters, their children. And um, so uh, one of the people who really worked hard was Kim Caceres. A blessed memory, who was struggling with her own personal health issues and has now gone to heaven. But they all worked literally manually. It wasn't just that we gave something. They pitched in and they worked uh, laying bricks outside there in the entrance to make sure that the, no one would fall. Uh, the boys built the, uh, the Barless brothers built the stairway. They came on the side here because the one, the main one, was getting pretty uh, broken up and wood was rotting. And when young people began to realize, hey, this is our way of offering praise and adoration and thanksgiving to God liturgically as a community, it changed everything. And the simplicity, because after all, Jesus was born in a cave, a barn, and the barn became uh, the Bethlehem for many young people, where they had a, an experience, a renewal, a rebirth as it would be from above, uh, I think it was significant. The Archbishop Iacovos, the great Archbishop Iacovos, came on June 6th of 1980. I remember that day as though it could be, could have been yesterday. And with him was his Archdeacon Gerasimus. Some wonderful photographs of that time where the liturgy was celebrated outdoors. Outdoors, or hundreds of people were here. We placed the altar table under the big... Uh, oak tree that was by the then parking lot, which is even today there. And, but the persona of, of Metropolitan Anthony, along with his eminence, the Archbishop back then of blessed memory, Akovos, made that event very special. But it was like a, magic, a magical moment. The first buildings at the ranch were the Kalokerinos dining hall, the Philoftokos and Apostle Lodges, and the Heritakis swimming pool. A few years later, the Ahepa and Magnatis dormitories completed the center complex. The Serene Lake and Karaginas Recreation Area have been a popular gathering place for a canoe ride, fishing, or just relaxing on the shore. Cretan Plaza provides a venue for family gatherings and an outdoor barbecue area. Through the generosity of the Callens family, the programs at the ranch have been further enhanced by the Nicholas James Callens Memorial Sports Courts, which provide a refreshing venue for basketball and volleyball. Everyone who visits St. Nicholas Ranch and the monastery has to drive through this tree-lined road, but most people don't know what these trees symbolize. Every year, Filoftokos has a camp for families with children that have cancer. Kids in Cancer, Camp Agapi, it's one of the most inspirational and beautiful programs that happen here at the ranch. Just before the families leave, we gather together and we say a prayer for the health and the well-being of the children. 
And then the ladies of Filoftokos, with the families together, plant a tree. Each one of these trees represents a lot of prayer, a lot of tears, and a lot of love. Uh, we uh, bring every summer uh, over 150 uh, young uh, kids with the parents uh, and their uh, medical staff, medical support staff, uh, kids that have been afflicted with the uh, uh, illness or disease of cancer. Uh, this way we give them an opportunity to experience the, uh, the beauty of this uh, place. Since 1982, hundreds of young people gather at St. Nicholas Ranch every summer for summer camp. Favorite activities include campfires, archery, swimming, arts and crafts, canoes, and hiking through the beautiful oak forest. Going to summer camp for the past, I think, 10 years now, um, I've been able to create a lot of really close relationships with a lot of different people from kind of all over the West Coast. Um, and I really cherish them and I'll never really forget any of the people I've met at camp. Camp is a place where there's just many people that are the same as you and you just there's just a lot of love everywhere and a lot of fellowship and everyone just knows each other. Um, St. Nicholas means a lot to me because I've made so many friends and even though I've only been going for three years, it feels like a home. Um, I love how everyone becomes a family and we become really bonded together. Um, what camp means to me is uh, a lot of friendships that are going to last forever. Uh, every year at camp, I've been going for about nine years now, and I seem to learn e something new every single time. So something about my faith, something about the people around me, it's just really great to be around that. St. Nick's um, is in my heart for a long time. I used to go to middle school and high school, and it's great coming back as an adult and bringing back the fond memories of just praying together and um, really establishing my faith in my everyday life. And one day when I have a family, I plan to bring them to St. Nick's too. youth program at St. Nicholas Ranch is Greek Village. It's an opportunity for young people to learn about the culture, the language, the dancing, the food, the music of Greece. It is important for me to come here every year to learn about the culture and the Greek language and to do a new friend every year. My father was a despot who started at St. Nicholas Ranch and now we are here to continue the work of him. There are dozens of other groups and events that call St. Nicholas Ranch home. One of the largest is the California Auto Heart Gathering. The ranch has also been home to several of our metropolis ministries, providing a peaceful and prayerful environment for clergy retreats and continuing education, church music conferences, family camp, senior camp, and our annual Metropolis Clergy Lady Assembly. In uh, February of 1980, we had a retreat up here, and by the barn there was uh, an old telephone pole that was just there. So again, going back with the students, the young people who came for the retreat, 
We found the telephone pole and I said, you know, this could be made into a cross. I had just come from Israel, from Jerusalem, just a few months before. This hill here looked exactly like the description of the hill of Golgotha, the area where Jesus was crucified. So we thought this would be the perfect place to put the cross. The cross was carried by those who were at the retreat. There were 40, 50 people. So they all took turns carrying the cross all the way from the barn up here. And we chanted whatever hymn that the young people could remember. So this is a very precious uh, landmark here at St. Nicholas Ranch. It's been a very special spot. And this is where we said one day there would be a monastery here. When Metropolitan Anthony was a young seminarian, he visited the Monastery of the Life-Giving Spring in Constantinople. It's a monastery dedicated to the Mother of God. And while he was there, he made a promise. So he went to, through the Panagia, the Life-Giving Spring in Constantinople, Panoply, and he was praying to Panagia, if one day I would be a bishop, he was 19 years old at the time. I will build a church for you. I will build a monastery for you. Here's so he make a promise. The church is right now was a 50 feet marvelous. That bless his memory, because without him we wouldn't have either the ranch or the monastery. What does the future hold for St. Nicholas Ranch? The possibilities are endless. We've been left with a strong foundation on which to build. Working together, we can build that future. Many people ask me about the ranch. The ranch provides the infrastructure so that we will be able to implement the various programs that we have in the metropolis, particularly programs that uh, resulted from the implementation of our strategic plan. One of the recent additions to the ranch is the Alex and Faye Spanos Faith and Heritage Center. This new facility includes administrative offices, conference rooms, the Metropolitan Anthony Gallery, and the St. Fortini Chapel. This is our calling. This is our challenge for the future. This is why we're here today, so that we can be able to make sure that we promise to ourselves and promise to continue that vision that Metropolitan Anthony had. A concerted effort with your help to make sure that the next 40 years, this place, this place here, the St. Nicholas Ranch and Retreat Center, becomes even more important in the lives of our faith. In order for this facility succeed, we need the support of everybody, me, you, and everybody. So St. Nicholas, speak to us and let us know the best way we can serve you in your holy name in this place. So this is our great uncle, Bishop Anthony. I'm Nasia and these are my sisters. I'm Georgia. I'm Joanna. It's really amazing to be here at St. Nicholas Ranch. Yeah, it really is amazing because our uncle had a dream that he could build a place where all the youth could come and learn about their culture, and his dream finally came true. Hey, we're here. Thank, Thank you, Thea. Thea. Is this the, uh, the fulfillment of a dream? Uh, no, I guess this was the beginning of a dream, and yet uh, I guess uh, one does, never stops. Uh, from uh, uh, dreaming other things uh, when you're uh, a minister of the church. Uplifting all and by poverty gaining strength Father and higher Saint Nicholas
intercede with Christ our God, that our souls may be saved.